Hi there. My name is Aaron Lancherman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the previous lecture of EC3400 Analog Electronics, we looked at common source amplifiers made with JFETs. In this lecture, we'll look at common drain amplifiers, also known as source followers. In this example, RI is considered to be the output impedance of our voltage source feeding the amplifier. It's not part of the amplifier itself. Similarly, I'm including a load resistance RL representing whatever the next stage of the circuit is that this is feeding. It's not part of the amplifier itself. Because I'm using a bias scheme where this resistor RG is going to ground, I don't need a coupling capacitor here. Now, if I wanted, I could put a coupling capacitor here and have this resistor RG go to some other voltage, or I could also put another resistor in here and have this go up to V plus and maybe have this down here go to V minus and set this gate to some other voltage. And you could work all of that out. But when I went through a bunch of books looking for JFET source followers for bipolar power supplies, this is what came up. And most of the examples I've seen online have unipolar power supply. So this V minus is ground. And remember this kind of self bias scheme is something I can only do with a depletion mode device like a depletion mode MOSFET or a JFET. I can't do this with BJTs or enhancement mode MOSFETs. I've included a drain resistor here because you can actually combine a common drain amplifier with a common source amplifier to create something called a cathodyne phase splitter. But if you're just making a source follower, you usually don't have a resistor here. So imagine setting RD to zero. I'll go ahead and leave it in. So as usual, we split this up into the DC bias circuit and the small signal AC circuit. And to get the DC circuit, I open up this cap and I zero the small signal source. Technically speaking, this resistor here would be RI in parallel with RG, but I haven't bothered to label it because for the JFET case, we're assuming that the current flowing through the gate is negligible. And since no current is flowing through the resistor, no voltage is being lost. So I can just imagine a ground sitting here. In a previous lecture, we computed this equation for the DC bias current in terms of a Thevenin equivalent voltage VGG seen looking out of the gate, a Thevenin equivalent voltage VSS seen looking out of the source, and a Thevenin equivalent resistance seen looking out of the source RSS. In this particular case, RSS is just RS. VGG is zero, so it doesn't appear in this expression. VSS is just V minus. And remember, V minus is going to be negative, so minus V minus is going to be positive. Also remember the pinch off voltage of a JFET is negative, so minus VP is also a positive number. Once you've computed the drain current, you can use it to check for saturation by computing the gate to source voltage using this formula here. And to compute the drain to source voltage, I can compute the voltage at the drain and take V plus and subtract the voltage lost across the drain resistor, which is ID times RD according to Ohm's law. And then I can compute the voltage at the source as V minus plus a voltage rise of ID times RS because the current is flowing the other direction compared to how I'm thinking about the voltage. Once you've computed the bias currents and voltages, you can compute the small signal parameters. GM are intrinsic transconductance. RS are intrinsic source resistance. That's just one over GM if you want it. And are not the intrinsic output resistance. I'm going to want to employ our Thevenin equivalent circuit seen looking into the source. For that, I'm going to need the Thevenin equivalent circuit seen looking out of the gate. Now, really, I don't need the resistance seen looking out of the gate because there's no current flowing through the gate. There's no voltage loss across it, so it's irrelevant. If you wanted to know what it is, well, it would just be RI in parallel with RG. Now, I do need the Thevenin equivalent voltage, which I'll call VTG, and that's just given by this voltage divider with VI being divided across RG. So RG is in the numerator. So I'm going to replace all of the stuff up here with our Thevenin equivalent circuit for looking into the source. 
So I have my Thevenet equivalent voltage looking out of the gate, VTG. And remember, RS is the dynamic source resistance of the JFET. That's a function of the DC drain current. So I can easily find V out using just a voltage divider formula. VTG is getting divided across RS in parallel with RL. And I can combine that with our formula for VTG from the previous slide to write the output voltage in terms of the input voltage like this. And I'm going to take this multiplier here and call it AV in a later slide. So just giving you a heads up on that. We're not considering the load resistance to be part of the circuit. So I'm going to define the output impedance as looking this direction into the source node. So that's easy enough to compute. When I'm computing the Thevenin resistance, I short out this independent source and I just have little rs in parallel with big rs. And this is a beautiful thing because rs is usually pretty small, so this kind of circuit has a fairly low output impedance. ri isn't considered part of the circuit. It's meant to represent the output impedance of the source we're using to drive the circuit. So I'm going to define the input impedance seen looking in this direction from this position. There's no current flowing through the gate, so the input impedance is just RG. And if you had some more complicated biasing network like this, then the input impedance would just be these resistances in parallel. This was a lot more complicated in the BJT case because there we had to worry about the current flowing through the base. So if we assume for a moment that RI is zero and RL is infinite, then our gain is given by this expression. And if we also assume that our fixed resistance at the source big RS is bigger than little RS, the intrinsic dynamic resistance of the JFET, then this quantity here is approximately one because little RS is negligible compared to big RS and these cancel. We could also say that our output resistance is approximately little RS. It has gain that's definitely going to be less than one. But the point of the circuit is not to provide amplification. The point of the circuit is to have a very high input impedance and a very low output impedance, so it makes a nice voltage buffer. Let's go to Marshall Leach's Analog Electronics website real quick and scroll down and let's see. Ah, here we go, Common Collector Amplifier. So if I scroll down here a little bit, we can find the various quantities that we computed for our small signal analysis. And you'll see that we didn't really have to do this extra work for the JFET. We could have taken our results for the BJT, let beta go to infinity, alpha go to zero, substitute various parameters, and we get the same result. Our gain formulas we computed for the JFET will also work for a MOSFET-based source follower if you connect the source to the bulk. And if you don't have the source connected to the bulk, you can make this correction to VTG by dividing it by 1 plus chi, and you can use this RS prime instead, which is RS divided by 1 plus chi, where this chi correction factor is something I'll talk about in the future.